All right, guys, so now that we learned how to create a brand new screen, let's go ahead and learn how to give it a custom icon and a name so the user actually knows what they're trying to click. So in order to do this, what you do is you go back to your storyboard and if you click the icon at the bottom, by default, it just gives you a square and the word item. Now, click that and go to your attribute inspector, the one that looks like a little arrow slider thing. And you're gonna see a bunch of settings right here. Now, if you want, and if this is just something generic, then what you can do is you can just give a, a system image and I don't know, maybe it's like your favorites. It'll add just the favorite icon and the word favorites or I don't know, maybe your history, or to add that little clock in the word history. So here are a bunch of default ones, and those work great, but what we wanna do is we wanna add a custom one. So hit custom right there, and now it says, okay, you provide the info for me. So the first thing is down in the title, I want this to be a profile, so I'm gonna hit profile and hit enter, and that changes just the title of it right like that. Now, instead of the square, I want my own custom image. Now, I already made images before, and what I did is I added these to the forum. So if you wanna use the same ones as I am, then go to the forum, download them, and use the same naming convention right here. Now, if you're making your own, I wanna just mention a few things. First of all, make sure that they're solid black. Don't add like a blue or gray or anything like that, because, I'll show you guys this. Even though you're looking down at right here and you're saying, okay, these are gray, and then when I click them, they're blue, what you do is you actually make just solid black for all of your icons, and then your iPhone is automatically going to change the color of them itself. So it takes care of all that behind the scenes. Just add black and you're good to go. Another thing I wanna mention is this. So anytime we wanna add images, we add them to our assets file, so click your assets file. And of course, what you can do is you can take all of these and just drag them in. Now, why did I name them these weird names? Okay, profile.ping, that kind of makes sense. Profile at 2x.ping, profile at 3x.ping. Those are kind of stupid naming conventions. Well, remember that I said that you need different size icons for different iOS displays. For example, your new iPhone is gonna have the retina display. It has a little better resolution. So you need a little better quality image. Now, the three icon sizes that you need are 25 by 25. That's what this one is, 50 by 50, and 75 by 75. So what you can do is you can create three separate ones and just drag them all in there. And you know before, whenever we played the game where you take each one, okay, this is my... 25, put that in one, 50, put that in two, 75, put that in three. If you use this name convention with the name, the name at 2x and the name at 3x, then you can just drag them all in like that and it fills it in for you. So if you like playing that guessing game, you can, but that's why I use that weird naming convention. So another thing that I want to mention is this. Now that you have all of your icons in there to your assets file, we can now use them in our project. So hop back over to your storyboard. And again, make sure that this icon is selected. And for the attributes, go down to image, not system image. This is something different. In your image, use profile. Now check that out. And now, since you use those cool naming conventions, no matter what device they're looking at this on, it's always going to use the um, pretty much the proper icon. And again, if you ever forget, okay, what was it? 25 by 25, like 50 by 50. I didn't just make those up off the top of my head. Apple actually has guidelines and they're probably gonna change in the future because they keep changing, but the documentation is always online. So let's go ahead and run this now and check it out. First, second, and now our cool profile with our little dude right there. Pretty sweet. So now that we got that taken care of, the only other thing that we need to do is we need to figure out how to add some brains to this screen. Because, all right, so we know where the brains are. No big deal. It's, uh, see, this is for the first one. This is for the second one, but, uh, huh. Where is the brains that controls that profile 
screen. Well, what we need to do is we actually need to create a brand new class for it. So if you go to file, new, file, what we need to do is choose Coco Touch Class. This is the basic class that all your brains use. Next, now for the view controller, uh, what can we name this? Let's name it Profile View Controller. This is the file that controls the profile view. Pretty simple. And it's a subclass of UI View Controller. And that's just a standard. And yes, that's where we're making it. And it creates that file for us. So again, they all were UI View Controller subclasses. So that's why I did that. So we pretty much got a standard brain file. Pretty stinking awesome. And let me just delete. I'll leave those right in there for now because I'll show you guys something cool. All right. So back in your storyboard, now that we got this class, what we need to do is we need to say, okay, we need to connect this screen, this screen, with this view controller. Did I accidentally, oops, I accidentally deleted all of them on my second view controller. So let me delete all of this. So this was the file that it created for us. I was actually playing around with this one. So anyways, back in our storyboard, what we did is we just created a brand new class, but iOS still doesn't know, okay, that class was supposed to be the brains for this profile right here. So how do we connect it? Well, let me zoom back into 100. And if you click this button right at the top, this yellow button right on top of your profile screen, then what you can do is if you click this little identity inspector that looks like a little ID card, then this is where you can say, okay, the brains for my screen right here, I want to be controlled by profile view controller. So that's where you connect it. And if you guys don't believe me, check this out. In the first view, it's first view controller. If you click the yellow button and check out the second view, the class that controls it is second view controller. And now, the class that controls this is profile view controller. So it says, okay, this is the screen. These are my brains. I'm good to go. Now, just to verify that everything works, go over to your class and we can just add something simple just for testing like print line and it'll just print out like a profile page loaded. So now whenever we, let me stop this and run it again. All right, so look at what happens. Whenever we click first, second, nothing happens. But whenever we click profile, it prints out in the console, profile page loaded. So again, it only loads one time but it does indeed verify that this file is hooked up properly to this screen. Pretty stinking sweet. So that is the basics of how you create a multiple view application and how not only you add a new screen, but also the brains behind it, an icon, custom title, pretty stinking awesome. And there are a lot of different types of navigation that we're going to be learning, but that was the basics. So, uh, yeah, now that we got our feet wet, we are good to move on to the next video. So, well, I'll see you guys then.